Okay. Uh, I'm Jonathan Overly with East Tennessee Clean Tools Coalition. I'm here with Andy Douglas with Kenworth. And we're going to learn a little bit about the Kenworth T440, correct? That's the T440 behind us. Yes. Okay, it's behind us. This is in a trash truck locational setup. This is a dedicated compressed natural gas vehicle, correct? Yeah. This, uh, this truck is powered by the Cummins uh, ISLG. Uh, that engine is capable of running on either CNG or LNG. Uh, it's spark ignited, so the, so the engine really just recognizes as as methane, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, so this truck here uh, rates up to 320 and 324 horsepower and 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. It's, this is the engine that you see today in uh, refuse transit bus. Uh, there's over 15,000 of these engines in service. Uh, the ISLG. The ISLG today. Uh, going forward, a little bit later this year, we'll be rolling out a new engine, and that will be a 12-liter engine uh, that will take us up to 100 horsepower. So people that really need a lot of pulling power, that's going to take care of that. So that's like the first quarter next year where that's going to really roll out. Yeah, we'll have a few engines late in the year, and then first quarter of uh, uh, but for people that need just over 300 horsepower or less, this could serve you know, that population. Yeah, it's, it's a real workhorse. Uh, it, Cummins rates it as 60 and 65. That's the sweet spot. And what they mean by that is 60,000 miles a year, 65,000 gross combination weights um, is... Um, uh, kind of the sweet spot, although this engine will pull 80,000. Uh, the, the real issue is uh, that you have to keep in mind is it does not have an engine brake, so uh, hauling brakes uh, you know, is, is something that uh, is probably not the, not the this isn't the right engine. Field. There's going to be some that won't fit for it's not enough power. Yeah, exactly. But there's many it does fit for. Yes. And so if they're 320 horsepower loads, yeah. trash truck, um, or refuse, uh, you said yeah, so mass engine transit engine use engine for the engine. For the engine, it, yeah, there's a lot in, in transit bus today. But for the T440 dump truck, mixer? The T440 behind me, we can do uh, any kind of straight truck uh, applications. Uh, it is really our, our baby eight uh, uh, in terms of its classification. Uh, but we can rate it anywhere from, you know, essentially 33.5 uh, and above. Uh, but we can do a tractor, we can, we can do straight truck configurations, we can do a standard day cab or sleeper cabs as well. So it's a very versatile uh, uh, truck. What, what are we talking rough up cost on these, excluding what we know for the vocation? Well, uh, uh, generally speaking, the, the upcharge is going to be all in the tankage. Uh, Natural gas tanks are uh, large and they're very expensive. The, the ratio that I, I tell people is, just, is one, one, two, and four. And what I mean by that is volumetrically, one gallon of diesel is about the equivalent of about two gallons of LNG in, in volume. And then when I go to CNG, that's four to one. So you start to see, particularly with CNG, is I need a lot of tanks on board. And those tanks are, are high pressure vessels uh, and use carbon deposit materials. So they are pretty expensive. So and in this case, they're lined vertically behind the top. Yes, they are. are. And I've got basically there about 60 diesel gallon vehicles. Um, generally speaking, I can get about 100 diesel gallon equivalents of CNG on board without getting too, too crazy. Much more than that, things start to get, uh, I, I, I start to get challenged by, you know, Frame space and where do I put all that? For somebody that needs more distance, this is the right application. The LNG could work for them. Yes. If, if other things with regard to LNG are appropriate, they use the vehicle regularly, it's not going to sit a long time. Yeah. I t when I t talk to customers um, who are really getting into this for the first time, really there's, there's four, four, four basic questions that I think are, need to be asked that will kind of triangulate you during this kind of technology, and that is, you know, where are you going to get power? And, and what kind? Is it CNG or is it LNG? That's a very important starting point. Uh, you know, secondly is, you know, what is, you know, what's your application? What, what kind of range do you, you know, uh, 
what do you require? So, so fuel source, range, application, what do you do, what do you haul, what kind of weights, that will really start to triangulate you around you know, what engine platform we want to look at, what fuel we want to look at, whether it's CNG or LNG, um, and then how much capacity of fuel do we need. Don't overspec tanks, uh, don't double down, so to speak, you know, uh, like you can with diesel, because, you know, diesel tanks are very inexpensive. Not the case for natural gas. And natural gas tanks are expensive, so we don't want to over, over spec in that area. Anything else we need to know? I mean, in this model, you've got most of the, where the driver is going to interface with it is on the left hand. Yeah. Yeah. Just behind this side, the refuel point is marked the 3600 CNG fuel generation. Or is it actually inside the green cabinetry? Somebody, there's two gauges that you'll have. You have two fuel points here. Uh, and it's basically, there's two uh, ports there to fuel the truck. Uh, there are two different standards out there in the industry, so we want to make sure that we have a fuel and we've got the right uh, fuel lower. So you've got the two different sizes. Also in that black box are two gauges, one showing fuel pressure in the tank, the other showing the pressure going to the engine itself. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have your dash gauge also showing how much fuel you have. Um, probably the key consideration with this technology that I think is you know, really important, the difference between natural gas and diesel is the, the emission side of the engine. And with spark ignition, with natural gas spark ignition, uh, we do not require any diesel emissions. So I, I'm taking off the cost, weight, and complexity that's associated with diesel. Uh, so, you know, diesel particulate filters, DEF fluid, regens, all that's gone. All of that's gone, and I simply replace it with a passive automotive style three way catalyst. Uh, so it's, it's no maintenance, it's no replacement, it's the emission system is basically good for the life of the vehicle. So that's, that's significant, you know, we, you know, we've done wonderful things with diesel emissions, it's great for the air quality and the environment, and, but, you know, for the actual operators, you know, I, I'm not sure there's a lot of big fans of it because we've added a lot of cost and complexity. So this can make drivers happier. Exactly. For the first time, what, maybe ever pulling something off of a truck <laughs> rather than, than putting it on. And so uh, that, that, that's really a, an important difference. And, you know, and for, for, for a lot of our customers, they tell us that those diesel emissions probably represent maybe two, three cents a run a mile in terms of real, real cost to them out of pocket. And so we're all in the Andy, if people have questions about this, they can contact you. Absolutely, at uh, you know just Kenworth.com, and uh, you know, we have a lot of information there, uh, as well as my contact. Uh, we'll make sure you guys get the phone number and email address. So uh, thanks for joining us. Okay, and well, thank you.